What's happening, friends? Welcome back to Dynamo DeFi. My name is Patrick, and on this channel, I talk about cryptocurrency, decentralized finance, and economics. Today's video is about the Cosmos network. What is Cosmos? What is its atom token? And what are some ecosystem projects within Cosmos? So first, a bit about what Cosmos is. It brands itself as the Internet of Blockchains, as you can see here on the Cosmos website. And they say that it's an ever-expanding ecosystem of interconnected apps and services built for a decentralized future. So sounds nice. What exactly does that mean? Basically, Cosmos was envisioned as a, uh, as a project that would build the tools to enable a world where there are hundreds or even thousands of blockchains running in parallel at the same time, and they can seamlessly swap information and value between each other, and users might not even know that all this was going on in the back end. And then Cosmos has been building various tools and infrastructure to enable this reality. To start, they built their Cosmos SDK, which was a software development kit that developers can use to easily spin up a new blockchain, and some developers say that they can create one in as short of a time as a few hours. Some of the projects that use this you might be familiar with. You have Terra Luna, which is the top 10 project and one of the best performing coins this year. You have Osmosis, which we talk about on this channel. You have Kronos, that's the crypto.com chain. You have Secret Network, and there's new ones coming online every single week. Then they also came out earlier this year in April with their IBC, which is a protocol that allows different blockchains to connect to each other and uh, easily transfer tokens in between. And so, and, and about 20, 24, 25 chains have come online to that as well, including the ones that I just mentioned. And uh, yeah, so, so it's got a pretty developed ecosystem. And, and the interesting thing is that a lot of the projects built on it are completely unique because uh, part of the idea of Cosmos is that there are chains where anyone can build an app like Terra Luna, although Terra is unique as well. But uh, a lot of the projects are app-specific blockchains. So we're going to talk about a few today where, where that blockchain has one specific app, one purpose that that blockchain does, and it does it really well. And, and something like that you know, could, could not be built on, on a network like Ethereum or even Avalanche. Uh, well, uh, it couldn't be built on the Avalanche C chain. And, uh, and so for this reason, because the ecosystem is so developed, I mean, it's one of the most developed ecosystems, arguably the most developed outside of Ethereum, to me, I think Cosmos has some of the best risk reward of any project in cryptocurrency right now. And I'll, I'll talk about that a bit more in a minute. So, uh, so kind of one other endorsement of Cosmos is Vitalik Buterin, founder of Ethereum, wrote a paper recently on the endgame for Ethereum. And he specifically said that it was a Cosmos multi-chain vision, and then he links over to the Cosmos website on on that link so so that there it is the founder of ethereum saying that ethereum should be should be moving towards being more like cosmos in some ways uh, which which is pretty rounding endorsement of this approach to the internet of blockchains right uh, and, and then a bit back a bit more back to uh, why why I think the risk reward is so good so cosmos right now it, it did have a pump in September but but it's actually only a bit over 2x from where it was at its lo lowest point earlier this year. At uh, the start of the year, it was maybe it was eight dollars, so it was it's done about a three x since then. But that's actually not up nearly as much as many other coins. But even during that time, they've had so many bullish developments, where new chains have come online. Several Cosmos projects have have jumped into the top one hundred. I think in the top twenty now, you have you have uh, maybe four chains that are connected to the IBC. You have you have Kava, you have Terra, you have Osmosis. And you have Kronos. So, so, so there's been all these developments. The ecosystem has tens of billions of dollars in it, uh, and yet the, yet the price has not done as well. So, th so I think, uh, and, and, and we'll talk about some reasons why the price might not have done as well in a second. Uh, but, but this is, uh, to me, you know, the, the reward if these if projects keep coming online, and then rather than there being 25 projects that are connected to the IBC, there's there's 250, then then yeah, this is this coin is is going to do very well. Um, and then to take take a bit more of a look at the IBC. So here's just an example of of all of the chains that are on it now. So you can see that they're all listed out here, and these are the connections between them. 
So you can see there's Cosmos and then Osmosis has a lot of connections to it as well. You can see all these transfers going in between the different chains right now at this moment. And, and there's quite a few transfers. So this is seven days, 200,000 to Osmosis, 93,000 to Cosmos. And uh, interestingly, Osmosis actually has more than Cosmos right now. That's sort of the DeFi hub of Cosmos. But but these numbers have have grown fairly substantially, and uh, and uh, and, and that's a lot of activity. But but you know, think about Metcalf's law, right? This is with twenty five. Once you add another twenty five, it's not just doubling; it's increasing exponentially. Because then you have not just the you're you're not just doing two x. You have connections between all those different chains, and so there's a lot of value accruing in the system, and the system becomes exponentially more valuable. Uh, and, and if you're not familiar with Metcalf's law, basically, if you have 20, 25 chains on here now, if you add a 26th one, that's 25 new connections because every chain can connect to it. Then if you add a 27th one, that's 26 new connections. If you add a 28th one, then it's 27 new connections and, and so on. And, and, and so basically then when you get to hundreds, then you, you've added tens of thousands of connections, not just hundreds. And, and that's, that's pretty powerful pretty powerful. And then just to take a look at the trends on this, these are the IBC transfers by month from same website map of zones. And you can see it's it's on a pretty strong uptrend through November and actually uh, you know, maybe November, October to November wasn't quite as big as the jump from September to October. However, uh, this is I, I would say to me this looks like it's starting to go parabolic, right? It's gone from from being Hundred, a couple hundred thousand in June, up to several million in a month. And so, so all this great, but why, why is it that the Atom token has not necessarily moved like many people thought it would? And, and I think the main reason is that right now there's actually not a ton of things that uh, accrue value to that Atom token. It's the token this for staking and governance of the Cosmos hub, which is one of those hubs we mentioned. But right now, you don't actually need it to use the Cosmos SDK. You don't need it to do an IBC transfer. So there's there's not a ton of ways for it to benefit from this, but that could change very soon. And here's how. Uh, the first thing is they had a proposal to allow uh, chains to pay to route their IBC through the Cosmos hub. And uh, why, why is it that they might want to do that? Well, you know, imagine that you are a small chain, maybe a team of five people, you're just starting out, you you spin up the nodes, you get connected to the IBC, then probably it's going to be a lot of work for you to maintain the infrastructure to connect to all of these other 25 chains. Or maybe there's 100 chains, right? And, and it's a lot, of, a lot of work to maintain the infrastructure, build the infrastructure to connect to 100 other chains. Uh, Cosmos Hub instead is saying that, well, that people could connect to the Cosmos hub, things would be routed through there and then get routed to all these different chains. In exchange, there would be a slight fee and that would accrue to Atom stakers. And so, so that would potentially be a powerful thing. And even though that sounds like, like, you know, how much value could that be? Again, don't just look at the 25. Think in terms of exponentials. Once you have hundreds of chains and, and hundreds of millions of IBC transfers, that would be a lot of value being, being uh, accrued. The other way is that a lot of projects are choosing to airdrop their tokens when they launch on Cosmos. A lot of them are airdropping their tokens to Adam Stakers. There were already two this year in the form of Juno and Osmosis. And so you can see here, this is if you had held Adam at the start of the year, you would have done about a 25x. And, and that comes both from the Adam price increase the Atom Rewards, which is which is I think maybe seven or eight percent right now, but also from the fact that you were airdropped Osmo and Juno, two of the flagship projects on Cosmos, and those have done so well, and their staking rewards have been so high that that you that, that you would have you would have actually done a twenty five x, and most of that would have come from Osmosis. Interestingly, so that's um, so so that's another way that it could accrue value is through more of these types of airdrops. The final way that it could accrue value is through interchain security. So if you're familiar with Polkadot, right now, chains on Polkadot or parachains on Polkadot pay to rent security from the Polkadot kind of validators. Well, uh, that doesn't happen in Cosmos right now. Chains have their own validators. But Cosmos is working on 
creating tools where chains could pay to to rent interchain security. And this is a uh, this is an article about the Gravity Bridge chain coming to Cosmos. Gravity Bridge is a bridge to Ethereum, and they're spinning out their own chain here. And sorry, it reset the page. Yes, so 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 they they are working on building the tools to to uh, create a decentralized future, and one of those is interchain security. So IBC was the first step. IBC is the thing that allows chains to connect, but then the next thing you need is you, you need to allow different chains to share security or to, to pay for security because not every new chain will be able to get a decentralized set of nodes right away. And, and so that's coming to Cosmos as well. And, and so that's one more way that will accrue value to Atom. So, so, so to me, this is a long-term hold. I, I don't know if these things will happen in one month, two months, one year, uh, but but to me, this this is a project with with a lot of potential reward. Again, you know, nothing I say is financial advice, so you should still do your own research on this. But but I'm personally looking long term at what Cosmos can do, and 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 I think it's pretty incredible. So if you're interested in this, you know, how can you get into the Cosmos ecosystem? Atom is available on most exchanges. It's available on Coinbase. It's available on Binance. It's available on almost everywhere. Yeah. So, so that should be no problem to get. If you want to get, in, get into the other apps, you will need a Kepler wallet. You can get that at Kepler.app, Kepler spelled K-E-P-L-R. And then you just install it as an extension on Chrome or Brave, and it works similar to MetaMask. As far as ecosystem plays, here are the few that I think are pretty neat that you may want to check out. And now before I go into these, I'm going to say that a lot of Cosmos projects have extremely high inflation. And, and I'm talking like 40% a year. So if you're buying these projects, then you basically need to stake it because otherwise your value is going to get diluted. And, and that inflation won't last forever. It's the first year the inflation's high to distribute the token and incentivize people to create nodes and stake the tokens, and then it will go down over time. But right now the inflation is extremely high. And I'm saying that because so, so that people don't hold it in exchange and just wonder why the value is being eroded. First is Akash Network, though. Akash is similar to Amazon Web Services. If you're familiar with Amazon Web Services, it's a service where developers can pay to have uh, servers running on the cloud. You know, they Rather than having to host their own server or find some sort of virtual private server, they can have, thing, have things computed in the cloud. And Akash does the same thing, but it's decentralized. So there's nodes being run around the world. It's cens censorship-resistant. Uh, and it's built on Cosmos, so this is one of those app-specific chains. And interestingly, they actually give some of the fees for uh, for using their system to Akash stakers. So if you buy the token, you're essentially buying a share of future revenue for this Amazon Cloud competitor, which which is both pretty cool in terms of decentralization, but also cool in terms of value accrual for token holders. Next project that I really like is Sentinel. Sentinel has their token DVPN. Sentinel is in some ways similar to Akash, except that it's a VPN service. So VPNs, many of you may be familiar with, especially if you're trying to access certain crypto websites that are blocked in your country. VPNs basically uh, hide which computer or IP address you're accessing the internet from. Uh, and oftentimes they'll, they'll even, you know, send you, route you through an IP address that's in a different country, right? So that if you're in the US, the website thinks that you're accessing it from Russia when you're really sitting in Idaho. And, and so Sentinel does that in a decentralized way. There have been some scandals with VPN services where they said they were private, and then when push came to shove, they actually released the, the names of their users. Uh, well, Sentinel is decentralized, and it's private, and it's censorship resistant, so you wouldn't have to worry about that as much. And this is similar to Akash in that some of the value from people using the service would actually flow back to DVPN stakers. Next is Osmosis. I've talked about Osmosis many times on this channel. It is the DEX of Cosmos, and it is being built into the DeFi hub of Cosmos. So there are, my understanding is there are increased DeFi functionalities being built into Osmosis, such as leverage, such, such as other things as well. And... 
and, and th this is where a lot of the action is right now because the, the rewards are incredible. Most pools have 100, 150% rewards, and these are, are again on solid projects like Luna, Secret, Atom. Uh, and, and I've talked about Osmosis many times, so many videos on that. So, so I'm not going to go into too much more detail on here. Final one, and I think this is potentially going to be the catalyst that Cosmos needs, uh, is this week Juno smart contracts are launching. So Juno is a layer one chain built on top of Cosmos. And, and uh, I have a whole video about Juno that I'll link in the description. But what's interesting about Juno is it has uh, it's basically built to be be as easy for developers to use as possible, and it has interoperable smart contracts. So Cosmos does not have native smart contracts that a developer could could deploy to make IBC transfers happen and and you know take advantage of this whole ecosystem. Uh, Juno will. So Juno will have smart contracts. You could write a contract that would interact with with the IBC that would uh, you know that, that that would take advantage of this whole incredible ecosystem we're talking about. And Juno smart contracts are launching in four days. I'm making this on December 11th, and they're launching on December 15th, 2021. Uh, and, and and it's going to be pretty pretty fast as well. It will scale to 10,000 TPS. And uh, and and I've got a lot more content coming on Juno in the in the near future. I think this project. They already have DeFi projects lined up. They already have games and NFTs lined up. I think I think this is going to be pretty cool. Uh, and, and I think part of the reason it's flying under the radar is so much of what they're building is geared towards developers. So they're building, you know, if you look at their documentation, they talk about building things that can be written, smart contracts can be written in different coding languages. And they talk about having better compilers that that developers can use things that would be great for a developer, but that just don't appeal as much to the average person. But I think that's why that they haven't actually gotten more attention. Uh, but but this is definitely a fundamental one I look at, and and there are some DeFi projects launching on Juno as well that that I'll be covering that you can check out. I covered one Juno swap in my previous video yesterday. So that's just scratching the surface. Uh, there, there's a lot of other great projects on Cosmos that you should check out. But, um, but 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 like I said, I think that this is has probably some of the best risk reward of any ecosystem in crypto right now because it's kind of flying under the radar even with people who are very deep into Ethereum, but they're just silently building out all of these new projects and all of this infrastructure to truly build a decentralized internet of blockchains. That's all I got for today. Let me know what you guys think about Cosmos. Let me know if there's any other upcoming Cosmos projects you're excited about. And until next time, this is Dynamo DeFi.